Hey guys, Too Legit City here, and today we're going to be going over some ranching basics in the game of Oxygen Not Included. And of course, ranching is something that's a little bit weird if you don't have a full idea of how it works. Ranching is basically taking care of the critters so that you could gain resources and or food, depending on uh, the setup that you have. But a lot of the ranching, although it stems from the designs and how you set up certain rooms, we're just going to be going over the basics of ranching, how to get started, what are the, some of the things you're going to need, and the difference between tame and wild ranching. Now to get things started, ranching does require you to have the ranching research because a lot of the buildings that are required for you to even get ranching started is locked behind research. Now, while you only really need to get this to get started, the animal control has some advanced things that you could also grab to further your ranching designs. But we're only going to be going over the basics. And of course, mainly all you're going to really need to get started is the things in this ranching research. Now, after that, you also need to have a skill called ranching. As if you don't have this skill, you cannot use the buildings associated with ranching. Now, this is also a two-point skill, meaning you won't be able to get it from the get-go. And even if you have someone with interest in ranching, it does nothing until you're actually getting able to get the tier one ranching skill. As that allows for critter wrangling and the grooming station usage, which is very critical. Now, to get it started... These are going to be the normal buildings you're probably going to want to use. The grooming station, the critter drop-off, and the critter feeder. Now, the critter feeder is how you're going to be able to feed your tame. That's tame, not wild. So after you have a tame critter, you're going to be able to feed them. Now, over here, it's going to tell you from all the food sources you have discovered what you have that you could feed the specific critter. So the hatches are going to be able to eat everything on this list. And if I wasn't feeding a hatch and maybe a grub grub, this is going to be what the grub grub is going to be able to eat. So this is a good tool to see what the critter types eat. As long as you've discovered the critter is going to show up here. And for the most part, you only use the critter feeder when you're tame ranching. Tame ranching is something going to be like this, where the hatches are going to be tame as a tamed ranch requires you to feed the critters in said ranch now if you don't feed your tame critters they starve to death so this is a very critical thing to have as this is going to be how your critters are going to be fed most of the time unless they are a grazing critter grazing critters includes things like drecos glossy drecos and gassy moos as they have to eat from the actual wild plant or domesticate a plant from a farm tile or a hydroponic farm or growing in the wild. They have to eat it from its source and you cannot harvest it for those specific critters. Otherwise, the other critters will go to the critter feeder and get the food that they like to eat as long as you supply it for them. Now, the next building we're going over is going to be the grooming station. The grooming station requires you to be in a stable as that is a 96 tile room space with the grooming station inside, minimum of 12 tiles. And once you have it inside, you're going to be able to use the grooming station. Now you can see right here when it's outside of a stable, this is actually not usable by your dupes, meaning that even if you have it there, no one's going to use it. As the outside of stable debuff makes it so that it's not usable. Now when you have a grooming station, what your grooming station will do is groom your critters and when you groom your critters they become happy because they just got a brush and their wildness goes down the grooming station is actually where you're going to be able to convert your wild critters into tame ones now grooming it also makes the critters happy and happiness means that a tame critter will have a happier life cycle meaning that the reproduction life is actually going to increase you can see right here that a happy critter goes up from two percent per cycle to 15 percent this is actually a very big jump as that shortens you from 50 cycles waiting for an egg to seven cycles to wait for an egg that is a big drop from 50 to 7 meaning that you get eggs a lot faster and that is actually the main reason why tame ranches are beneficial, as it allows you to increase the sheer number of critters that you are taming, 
and when a critter is tame, the eggs they lay out become tame as well. That means that if you do grow your critters to a large amount, you have to make sure you're going to be able to provide food for them. The next building we're going to be going over is the critter drop off. This is going to be how you're going to be able to control and relocate your critters so that your critters could be in the right location. If they're wild, you could use the critter drop off as a way to just drop off your critters. As you can see right here, we dropped off a plug slug who's wild and happy. Some of the hatches right here are wild as well. And we just drop them off right here so that they have their own rooms. They don't go into areas they're not supposed to. Things like the plug slugs, if they get to the metals, they'll start eating your metals and start releasing hydrogen. Not so much that you're worried about the hydrogen, but you don't want to lose your metal ores. As those typically are not replenishable unless you get out to rocketry. Also things like pips, they might go into your storage box, grab some seeds and start planting things. You might want that to not happen. So having the pips relocated, it's sometimes a good thing. But that's usually the reason why you would want to relocate your critters or just moving them to a box so that you could start taming them. Now for the taming basics, the tame critters, as we went over before, will lay you a lot more eggs than a wild one does. As you can see that the happiness increases the amount of reproduction rate they have. Typically, you're going to be able to also increase the number of critters as we've gone over that and usually if the amount goes too big you might want to make a kill box where the eggs of said critters automatically get destroyed so that as soon as that eggs hatch they immediately die and become meat that's typically what people would do with the excessive amount of critters they have anyways or just attack them straight up that's really up to you how you want to do that design but for the basics, most of the time, the taming setup is really just to increase the number of critters. Typically, you'll get anywhere between 16, around 16 extra eggs compared to a wild one. And that's really dependent on the age of, this, of said critter. Something like a Draco lives up to 150 cycles, so you're going to get more eggs with a Draco than you do with any of the hatches. But at the same time, something like a shine bug that only lives 25 cycles won't give you that many more eggs. So that may be something you might want to look at when you are trying to increase the number of critters if you're looking for a food source. Now, wild taming. What is wild taming? Wild taming is usually something like this where you will relocate your critter so that they're in a fixed position and you don't feed them as all you have to do is just kind of have them live there. They're considered wild when you don't groom them. So as you find these critters in the wild, they're going to be considered wild in their status bar. And for the most part, all you have to do is just put them in their own room and give them space. As long as they have space and never get cramped, they will always give you one egg in their life cycle now it's always one egg regardless of which kind of critter it is if it lives long if it lives short it will always give you one egg if it's wild and not cramped cramping is something that happens when you don't have enough space for each critter you could assume a rule of thumb of 12 tiles per critter is about how much space they need and that includes the eggs when i count the critters in this room, there's two Sweetles and one egg. That's technically three critters. So I would need at least 36 tiles of space for them. And we have more than that. So they're happy. And when they get old enough, the second one will give us another egg. Now this is good for if you don't want to do anything with the critters. Allow them to go through their life cycle. And just have them there for the time being. You could have this alongside your other farms for food and just passively get a little bit of extra as the critters grow through their life cycle. But understand that it's very, very slow as it's going to depend on how long the critter actually lives. Because they're wild, they do not need to be fed. So they live indefinitely as long as they're within their livable range on the ideal temperatures. You guys might want to check this out if you guys are playing on a asteroid that has extreme temperatures as it may kill some of the critters. Now, for the most part, there's also other buildings like the fish feeder. This is specifically because fishes don't get ranched in a similar fashion. 
the fish feeder doubles as both a critter feeder and a grooming station, as the fish feeder, if your fishes eat from it, will start to become tame. So this doubles as both a critter grooming station and a critter feeder. So if you want to start ranching fish, you're going to be looking for the critter feeder. As for relocating fish, it's a lot more finicky. It requires you to have plastic as you need the fish trap and the fish release. But if you guys don't have access to plastic, you are most likely going to be waiting for the fish eggs. As you could easily relocate the fish eggs with regular storage bins. Now that's the ranching basics. For the most part, you could tackle along any critter with these basics, come up with a design on your own. But just to get started, that's all you really need to get to know of. For the specific designs, a lot of times it has to deal with the properties of said critter than to have a generic design that basically allows anything to be ranched properly. So you, you guys are going to have to look into some of the specific designs, like the shovel box is a little bit small, the hatch ranch is more larger, and depending on the type of critter, there's going to be some nuances that you're going to have to take care of. One other thing is critter eggs. Critter eggs have a incubation rate where their egg incubation goes up by a fixed amount per cycle. This is going to be how quickly your egg is going to hatch. Once it hits 100%, the egg will hatch. And below that, we have something called viability. Viability is what happens when you store a critter egg inside a storage box, a storage bin, inside of a loader, basically anything that's not in the actual world. That means that it's going to be losing viability and the incubation does not go up. The incubation range will actually go down to 0% per cycle. And if the viability hits 0%, you stored it in such a bad environment for so long that you get a raw egg instead of an actual critter. That means that you get raw egg and you could really just cook that to make an omelet and no meat less happiness and you don't get another critter anymore a lot of times you want to avoid this but that is the ranching basics just to get started if you guys have any comments any questions leave a comment down below and of course guys hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe thank you guys